In today's video, I will be discussing with you the importance of sex hormones and how it relates to hair growth and hair maintenance. In the thousands of women that I counseled over the last 19 years in our pharmacy, one of the chief complaints that I get is my hair is thinning out and I'm losing my hair. And that usually happens around that perimenopausal age. If you are one of these women, I encourage you to talk to your provider about getting a complete sex hormone panel completed along with a complete thyroid panel as well. If you want to get started today in measuring your hormones, you can call the pharmacy or you can even buy a hormone test kit online through our website. I will put a, a link in the show notes below. And there's also a promo code that will save you $100 on your hormone hair package. Let's get into today's content, understanding more about progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone and how that relates to hair growth and function. All right, so here's where we can start looking at some hormone imbalances and say, do we have these or not? If we have the imbalances, we can fix them and our hair can grow back just off of this. And then that would be a permanent solution that we wouldn't have to keep <laughs> squirting this foam on our hair every night. So um, estradiol, and this is what I see just about every day, estradiol and progesterone um, increase the amount of time that hair spends in the growth phase. So estrogen and progesterone are good for hair. But when we hit menopause or as that wonderful picture there of birth control that can suppress our body's production of, of hormones that we produce and that can screw up our hair. Low levels of estrogen, I'm just saying this in reverse now, so low levels of estradiol and progesterone, well actually not, but low le levels of estradiol and progesterone can increase androgenic or basically testosterone and dihydrotestosterone effects. So again, I think of that as a teeter-totter. If you've got enough estrogen and progesterone and your testosterone's here, your hair's fine. When you hit menopause, your estradiol and your progesterone drop, and now you, this didn't change, but comparatively you've got more of it, and that sucks. And so now your hair starts thinning out. But the double whammy is, though, is that estrogen and progesterone keep testosterone in place, but now when this drops, this actually does go up. So that sucks even more. So you don't, you can actually give a woman progesterone It'll help with a million other things in their body, but it'll reduce the amount of testosterone in their body and reduce the amount of DHT in their body, and then their hair thinning will stop or it'll slow down just by giving them progesterone. But we want to test that to confirm that first, and the same thing with estrogen. So, I do want to clarify that I'm talking about bioidentical hormones here. So I'm not talking about the birth control on the previous picture because those are synthetic. You're not going to get the same results that you are with synthetic hormones as bioidentical. So, uh, Hyperandronism intensifies hair loss, so just excessive testosterone. And we, somebody, Carol, you mentioned hypothyroidism. So when you're talking about hormone changes, you, if the other issue that comes into effect when, and I'll keep using the example of the menopausal woman, her progesterone drops during menopause. Guess what hormone is needed to, to activate thyroid hormone? One of, one of many. Vitamin D is one, but progesterone is the other. There's an enzyme in the body that converts inactive thyroid hormone called T4 into active hormone called T3. And so if you don't have enough progesterone around, that enzyme does not convert as well. You become hypothyroid, and then what happens is your hair starts to thin and not grow as well. So you can, you can fix hair loss with sometimes very simple things. Or it could be more complex too. So. Progesterone and hair loss. So progesterone competes with aldosterone for receptor binding. So similar to spironolactone. It's a drug we use in um, many different issues, but I won't get into that too much tonight. Progesterone is an alpha, 5-alpha reductase antagonist, so it inhibits conversion of testosterone into DHT. So big picture wise, if my hair is falling out because I have too much testosterone and too much DHT, which we can measure with a t simple blood test or saliva test, if we have too much of this, we can just take progesterone to lower testosterone and DHT. There's drugs out there with side effects that can do the same thing, but as a natural pharmacist, I'd rather give you something that's safer, like natural progesterone that's already in your body, and just increase that, which will help 
reduce the conversion of testosterone, which causes hair loss, but even dihydrotestosterone, which causes even more hair loss, I can just give you some progesterone or recommend it to your doctor to prescribe to you, and your hair loss can be less of an issue. So suppresses, uh, I put suppresses or balances excessive testosterone and estrogen. Plus, yeah, not only does progesterone keep testosterone in check, but it also helps keeping estrogen in check too. So I don't want to increase your risk of breast cancer. I don't want to increase your risk of uterine cancer. Um, and the list goes on. I mean, estrogen's great in all, right? But it's got to be the right type of estrogen. It's got to be in the right amount. And to help do that, progesterone helps to keep that in check. And progesterone goes on and on. It's got, we're going to talk about glycemic regulation in a few minutes, but it, it improves glycemic regulation and insulin resistance. I mean, there's a whole issue with PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and that really comes down to an issue of insulin resistance. And so I would recommend to the doctor to change that patient's diet because it, they're more than likely eating too many carbs and refined carbs, and more than likely they don't have enough progesterone in their body. And so that's just the hair loss in that particular patient is just a symptom of a bigger problem. And then it suppresses cortisol activity, increases. Um, so most of us that are stressed out, we have too much cortisol, and that causes our hair to thin and not grow as well. So progesterone helps balance out stress. It increases GABA, which is our calming neurotransmitter. And so who I, I could raise my hand. I probably need some progesterone every now and then to just chill ourselves out. So... Um, so all good things there. So I think this kind of summarizes it. So if, we, if we're losing our hair, we're thin, we're, hair's thinning out, and we have not tested any of our hormones, we should do that. That would be, especially for a postmenopausal woman, I'm going to recommend, even for men too, actually, quite honestly, male, pal male pattern baldness. I want to see what their testosterone level is. I want to see what their estrogen and progesterone level is and so forth. Uh, because if that is unbalanced, that could be contributing to part of their issue. Uh, so we've been using a company, ZRT, for 30 years now. They test hormones through saliva, through blood. Uh, it's a very simple test to do. It's an at-home kit that we sell here. It tests your estrogen, your progesterone, your testosterone, your DHEA. It tests your cortisol. So you can get a lot of answers just by doing a ZRT hormone kit. Uh, they also offer... A comprehensive thyroid panel. They offer a four-point four cortisol test if somebody's really stressed out, and if they can identify that you know there was a certain issue that happened, and then their hair started falling out because of a certain stressful life event, something to that nature. I'm going to have them do a cortisol test to see if their cortisol is is way out of whack. Because if it is, then there's a, there's our potential problem right there. Let's fix that patient's cortisol, and their hair is going to start coming back the way it needs to. Um, and then they have a very comprehensive thyroid panel. Um, unfortunately, most of the labs that I see that, that we don't do here for thyroid are, I hate to say this, but they're grossly inefficient. I usually just see a TSH. And that is just, a sm in my opinion, a small window of what's really going on with that patient's thyroid issue. I want to see their free T3, their free T4. I want to see their antibody levels. I even like to, I, I should add to this, I'd like to see their uh, iodine level as well to really get to the root cause of their thyroid issue, which could be leading or contributing to their hair loss or hair thinning. So if you haven't had that done, might be something um, to consider. I put the price on there, 349 bucks. So, moving on, so we're kind of moving down towards that list, uh, the other, that checkpoint list that I had early on. Please let me know in the comments below if you are one of those women that have found value in balancing your hormones and, and how that has influenced your, your hair growth. In next week's video, I'll be discussing with you the importance of vitamins and minerals and how we can test for those genetic SNPs to help improve hair function. As always, if you found value in today's content, I encourage you to share this video with a loved one. And if you want a more personalized program on figuring out what the issue is for your hair loss, please give the pharmacy a call or stop in. I can meet with you one-on-one -on -one to figure out what the best plan is for you. Have a great day.